Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another, another brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where you go over songs that came out, well, This Week in EDM. Uh, we've got 23 songs I wanted to talk about. I thought this was a pretty good week on paper, not gonna lie, but in actual practice, I thought it was sort of okay in the end. I thought maybe there's gonna be some more kind of standout tracks, but uh, it was still a solid week, I would say, all things considered. But uh, let's hop into it. Uh, nothing in trash this week, and we will start in bad songs that I thought uh, I didn't think we're great. I thought we're bad. Again, just my opinion. Remember that. Uh, we've got Lifeline by Armin Hammer and Lena Leon. Uh, third single from the up and coming uh, Together as One LP on Monster Cat. Um, but to me, the drops on this track just felt really dull and was super flat, uh, super flatly mixed. Um, Lena's vocals are also nothing special, I think, either, kind of sadly, and that she didn't really, didn't really take away from the track, but didn't really add much either. And I just thought the whole thing just felt really, really flat. And uh, that was, um, that was that. And uh, then we've got Do You Want Me by Hayden James and Bob Moses. This is a pretty standard house beat, um, but my goodness, I, I don't know what they did to Bob Moses' vocals on this track. Um, they sound so off-putting and, um, I don't know, generally bad sounding. Like, it's just, I don't even know how to put it. Like, it's just Bob Moses. I love Bob Moses for their vocals and just kind of this weird, like, almost, uh, like, husky, very tenor style voice. That's a little monotone at times, but I don't know what they did to this that just made it, I don't know, not a fan, personally, but... Uh, but then we're moving to the mad category. Songs that I thought were, uh, were, were mad. Uh, we've got Dallas by Must Die. Uh, the song honestly had me going in the first half. Um, but it's kind of sort of lost its luster uh, at the halfway point for me. Uh, where it sort of became a bit of a screech fest of noise. Um, I've slowly been getting into the Must Die a little bit here and there. There's some stuff that I did a little too much on the uh, the screechy bro steps died for me. But then other stuff that I did enjoy. But uh, this one was on the more uh, not my flavor. So take it with a grain of salt. Uh, then we've got Cellular by Nikki Jam, Maluma, and The Chainsmokers. This is your very run-of-the-mill dance pop track. Um, it's got its Latin influences in both the production and lyricism, but really isn't anything uh, more than just streaming bait, I would say. Uh, then we've got Hello by Laidback, Luke, Vinny, and Bose featuring Ray Ray. Uh, this is, yeah, just a quick clubhouse hit. Uh, and while it succeeded in doing so, um, in being that kind of fun, little bit of a jumper, kind of get you going track, um, it's really nothing more than a club bop and wasn't anything too, uh, too special out there. And we've got Freedom by Synergy and What's So Not. Uh, this is another very standard drum and bass track that leans more into the, honestly, the boring side of things. Uh, the <laughs> the more you listen to it, and I listened to this a couple times on repeat, I was like, I'm just like, they just, I'm kind of just bored of this track already. So uh, I didn't think it was, didn't think it was anything uh, to write home about. So that was that track. Uh, then we've got Heat by Diesel and Cranked At. Uh, I'm actually really not that impressed with this song. Uh, I actually liked it way less than Bang Your Head, personally. Um, it's kind of got your just standard bro step drops that feel very same samey to everything else in the bass world right now. Uh, this is really just more or less a festival banger. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just, I just didn't think it was anything too special. And I don't think Cranked At really brought a whole ton to the track in his own style. Felt like it was more diesel led, uh, which is good for it being on a Diesel album, but uh, yeah, I just uh, wasn't uh, wasn't loving this one too much. But then we've got Ego Death by Tynan and Outrage. The Prophecy Volume 8 from ba Bass Rush is here, and this track is the kind of lead single from that compilation. And uh, the song's got some fun elements to it with some big sounds, uh, but overall didn't really personally impress me in particular. I think the hits were just a little bit too stale and a little bit messy for me to uh, really like this. Um, yeah, Tynan is either hit or miss for me, and so this one was sort of just actually just right in the middle, so yeah. And then we've got Fine Day Anthem by Skrillex and Boys Noise. Uh, it feels like the EDM world is this weird obsession with the Fine Day remixes as of late with, um, what was it, Sub uh, sub Focus and now Skrillex and Boys Noise. So I don't know. It's just like, it, it's a fine remix, all the puns intended, whatever. But uh, yeah, it definitely hit its stride in the back half, more so the front half being a little bit more boring. But uh, this is really just a public release of uh, a song just so that um, the, you can have it on Spotify because they've been playing it for, uh, or in their sets for years now, so. 
Uh, and then sort of disappointingly, actually, I would say we've got one chance up next by Knock 2 and Nightmare featuring Marley. Uh, first of all, I'm shocked that this is on 88 Rising, uh, the label that's sort of more known to have uh, Rich Brian and Joji as sort of the, the front mans for this uh, label and more of a kind of, yeah, that, that style doesn't really, Knock 2 Nightmare doesn't really match that style as much. But regardless, um, this is a new kind of bass house track. And uh, yeah, I just I was a little underwhelmed by it, I would say. Um, didn't quite pack the punch that Knock 2 normally does, and Nightmare's heavier production doesn't really play a role either. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a mindless track that I just felt like should, it, it should have had more of a um, collaboration style to it rather than like a handoff, because Knock 2 has the first half and Nightmare has the second half. Um, and I'm sure, obviously, there's lots of inter intermingling and mixing in between, but it just felt like it was just like a um, my turn, your turn thing now, not a collaboration of songs and ideas, but yeah. We are now moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, were solid. Uh, we've got You Don't Ignore or Too Late by Petite Biscuit. A funky single with a lot of potential for commercial success here. Uh, kind of vibey summer track. And um, I'm excited to see if Petite Biscuit will embrace uh, this kind of newer style, more kind of um, uplifting electropop style and kind of like, take back more of his kind of cla classic atmospheric self. And so um, we'll see if there's more to come. But... Uh, then we've got Closer by Fred V and Denmo featuring Lodi Jones. Uh, this is a nice D&B track with some backing strings that kind of keep the track feeling more uh, serene. But this is more or less a standard drum and bass song, uh, but with some subtle production elements that keep the track uh, more engaging than others. I've got I Remember the John Summit remix originally by Deadmau5 and Cascade. Uh, honestly, I think the song isn't good just because the original is so good. I don't think John Summit really brought a whole lot to this track that changed it up. He didn't, other than maybe adding a bit more of a constant beat to it, there's really not much else that this remix is other than the original. So uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a good song because the original I think is good. And uh, they've got Healed by Golden Features featuring Romarin. I think that's how you say that, but uh, the Sis uh, Sisyphus LP uh, is out now, uh, album by Golden Features. Um, this is a very chippy single, I would say, from the LP with nice sound design and tone. Um, it's a bit of a softer song in the grand scheme of things, and uh, it's a style that Golden Features has been perfecting, I think, specifically on the singles leading up to this LP, and this LP as a whole, and I'm excited to dive into it more so uh, in the uh, coming weeks, so yeah. Then we got Breach by R.L. Grime and Jules. This is a very high velocity main stage track. Um, this collaboration worked really well and really has added to the fantastic year that both these artists are having. Um, both R.L. Grime with a, I'm assuming some upcoming project and Jules with the Floor Space LP coming out just recently. Um, I thought this was a great addition to um, the year for them. So good track. I've got that star over there by Mr. Fiji Ouija. Uh, new Fiji, but this time with a kind of bright and airy piano lick, um, which is fairly uncommon, I would say, for Mr. Fiji Ouija. Obviously, there's some production elements there to it, um, but that's not normally the main kind of driving melody line. Is not a kind of bright, airy piano. It's more often the kind of, uh, like, what I would say, zangy kind of trip-hop synths to it. But, uh, yeah, the track's a little bit more uplifting for Fiji, uh, not so much your kind of down and... Um, I wouldn't really say depressing, but just like a uh, makes you think kind of track. At least that's how I feel with Fiji. So um, I like it. Nice little change up. It still does have that other stuff in it that Fiji's kind of known for. So uh, then we got Tiny Flowers by Son Holo. The era of the existential dance music is in full swing with this new track. And it is that style to AT existential dance music. That is what this song feels like. Uh, the vocal delivery here is a lot more uh, subdued and kind of quiet, uh, quiet performance, making the track feel a little bit more uh, intimate, I would say, for Son Holo. And uh, beat-wise, though, this is actually Son Holo drum and bass, and definitely more on the liquid side of things. But um, yeah, and this <laughs> definitely wouldn't be a Son Holo song without it kind of having a halftime final movement. So that is that track. And then we've got Mothership by Fool and Scum. Electro House that is stylized with outrun elements is sort of both these artists, Fool and Scum to a T. But uh, yeah, good mix of nostalgic synth hits and a very kind of mysterious, darker tone. And uh, it's a solid track. They've got Snakes and Ladders by Kiro and Bianca. The poppiest tune I think I've heard yet from Kiro. Uh, and uh, Bianca's flow, a uh, vocal flow, works really well with the uh, backing production, I would say. And uh, I don't know, the whole song just felt really smooth. And I actually think this is one of my favorites from Kiro. It, the whole thing worked really well. And um, I thought it was a good kind of poppier take on uh, Kiro's production style. So, way to go. 
Then we've got Silent Assassin by TK Maidza and Flume. Uh, this is essentially just a Flume kind of production credit on this track in particular. It's kind of a bit of a weird like alt R&B, but not quite like pseudo hip hop. It's a kind of a weird in between, but uh, yeah, this feels like it could have been on a Flume mixtape, one of the two from this past year uh, with its kind of dark tonality and deeper punches to it. And um, I actually quite enjoy the track, so. That's that. Uh, then we've got the Summer Dew, or the Summer Summer Dew by Zavi in September. The Summer Dew EP is where I was trying to go, uh, is out now. And Zavi's helped describe the EP and the song in particular with kind of a mix of being a mix of Maddion and Porter Robinson, the kind of older styles. And I would very much agree with that, I would say. Got the kind of punchiness and power of a Zavi track with the electro pop and bright elements of kind of old school Maddion and Porter Robinson. So I really enjoyed this EP and I'm, I'm excited to explore it in more detail in the future. Then we've got Of Two Minds by Imanu and Road, a song that I just did a reaction to recently. I uh, really enjoyed it. It felt like it was right off of the sort of, sort of unfold LP that he had put out back in 2022. It felt like it sort of lost cut from then. Um, but yeah, it's got a uh, nice kind of like Imanu's sort of always done uh, the darker atmospheric drum and bass sound design with really, really uh, punchy uh, percussion sounds. And um, it's kind of got a back half that I was a little uh, confused of at first of just kind of like a like a very just open, just like a ethereal back end. And uh, I think it's really trying to be the two minds here of the kind of intense and then the kind of more open airy feel. But um, yeah, solid track. Uh, then we'll move into the final track of the week. My number one track of the week is Say Yes or Say No by Feed Me. I'm really loving this new single. It's a weird kind of mixture of uh, like glitch, electro, and house that creates a really unique sound uh, that I think is is very different from what Feed Me has normally done or typically done in the past. And um, yeah, I really liked it. I'm a big fan of the vocal samples here too. I think it's just a really fun, really engaging, uh, unique style for um, Feed Me. And I guess just EDM in general. So um, something that I found uh, quite interesting that I liked. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of any and all of these songs in the comment section below. As always, they are in the Spotify playlist that you can also find right there underneath the like button. But uh, other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.